Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the weak num function. So what the weak num function does is it gives you back the weak number based off of a date. So for example, if you are charting out uh, values out of a year, and maybe you're talking about um, the 52 weeks out of the year, you want to chart out the data based on the weak number, 1, 2, and 3, and 4, etc. instead of uh, the days, you can use the weak num function for that. Now there are some caveats on using the weak num function because there are different perspectives on when uh, to number a week, when the starting day uh, begins that number of the week. Uh, there's some standards. Uh, there's even an ISO standard, ISO standard for that. And there's, an Microsoft, there's a Microsoft article on that available here uh, uh, under this particular URL. So by default, the week num function considers week one starting on January 1st and then week number two, uh, beginning the following Sunday. So I'll show you how to adjust some of that in the demonstration, but you just have to keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and uh, copy some of the values here. Let me go and copy uh, columns A, press the control key. I'm gonna go and do a multi-select of non-contiguous cells, just column A and C. I'm just gonna copy those two. So let's go ahead and press control C to copy. Go into sheet two here and then press control V to paste. Now we have our values here. Let me go ahead and insert another column in here. So that will be my week number column. I'm gonna right click, go under insert, and I'll just call, title this week number, All right? I'm gonna go ahead and double click the border here to auto fit that. Now the week num function is basically pretty simple. Just type equal week, and then I'll go ahead and double click the select week number. And the serial number is uh, this number. Go ahead and I don't need to uh, show this one yet, this argument where it says return type. I'll show you later on what that means. But let me go ahead and just close the parentheses, press enter, and we have uh, this date. Now the reason why this date showed up is when I showed you earlier that, let me go ahead and go under the insert function window here. When I showed you earlier that the first argument is the serial number, that basically here returns back a one. So that's the first week. It returns back to number one. But the reason why it shows that date, let me go ahead and get out of there, is because Excel sees dates as serial numbers. Now the formatting for this cell is a date format, and that's why it shows 1-1-1900. One, one, uh, so dates in Excel start with the number one and then go number two, number three. And of course the number one coincides with January 1st, 1900. And that's why it shows it there. So we don't want that date there. We want a serial number. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this column and just click on general. So I just want a general format. No specific format. I don't want the date format. I want uh, just general format. And so it'll revert to the number one. So that's what I want. So I'll go ahead and double click the fill handle down here and it'll copy the function down. I'm gonna go ahead and double click that, copies it down, and we have our date. Now, I can go ahead and start charting this, but we'll notice that we have two weak numbers here and for this quantity. So if I charted this out, it would only show one of these, and I'd probably show the second one, and it'll show it for the quantity of 118. We want to combine uh, week number two for these two values. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into a pivot table, and then use the pivot table to source a pivot chart. So let's go ahead and click on any cell here, go under insert, and go under insert pivot table. Let me put it into a new worksheet. Click OK. And the week number, I'm just gonna put it over here. And then the quantity over here. So as we saw earlier, we'll call this, we'll call this pivot table number two. Pivot number two. We'll see in sheet two here, these two uh, values here, this is week number two, uh, they have a quantity of 56 and a quantity of 118, which should total up to 174, which is 174 here. So then I can chart this out correctly now based on this data. So now with the pivot table created, I can go ahead and go under insert. I'm gonna go under analyze, go and insert pivot chart. So what's gonna put a, it's gonna give me some suggestions here. Uh, I, I think I'll stick with the column chart here. Uh, this is what I'll, I'll take. And I'll go ahead and click okay. And let me go ahead and close this uh, window here. And now I've got my, my chart here. So the chart shows kind of correctly the weeks of the year. Now you also notice now there's this 53rd week. And the reason why there's a 53rd week is because of the way the week number function works. So let's go back into sheet two. You would kind of think that usually there are 52 weeks in the year, but this week, this week 1-1-2014 began on a Wednesday. So we can kind of use another function to determine which day of the week it began. So I'll just type equal week and then day. And, it'll t and I'll just click on the serial number here, press enter. 
So it says here the the weekday is the fourth weekday of the week. So basically it's a Wednesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So what it's saying is that the the week number uh, it's going to be that first week, but then basically the week number kind of begins on the Sunday, uh, which is December of the previous year. So it's including uh, those particular days. If we wanted to say that, oh, this week occurred, the first week of this particular date occurred on Wednesday, we would need to change this. So let me go ahead and bring up the function here. So, and then go ahead and bring up the help on this function window. And what we're looking at is adding that second argument return type, right? So if we click on help with this function, we'll have our Excel help window. And it's going to show us the explanation for that return type argument. So basically, it's going to give us different options that we can use for the return type. So let's say that the, if, it's, uh, if, we didn't, if we didn't have the return type, it's omitted. It basically says the week begins on a Sunday. So even though this date was on Wednesday, the number one that week occurred on the Sunday, so that Sunday was back in December of the previous year. So what we want to do, if we want to have it occur on the Wednesday, 13 here, I can go ahead and just, let me go ahead and close this. I'll just type 13, oops, 13, press OK, and then go ahead and double click the fill handle here to bring it down. And now you'll notice if I go all the way down here, instead of 53, it'll be on 52, So because it started the week one on the Wednesday. So if I refresh this pivot table here, click in the pivot table, go to analyze, and click refresh, you'll notice that it's gonna refresh the chart and that 53 will dis disappear, kind of bleed into the data here. So I'll go ahead and click on refresh, and now we have 52 weeks instead of 53. So that's kind of the explanation of why we have that particular argument there. So it depends on how you see your week starting out. So if I go back into sheet one, again, depending on how you want your data viewed, you probably want to look at this blog here, the Microsoft uh, Office blog, and kind of get an idea of the different perspectives on when a week should start. And so there's different ways that it can start. So based on your particular way if you want to communicate information, you might want to consider that. So that's how you would use the week num function uh, to kind of show the week numbering uh, in weeks instead of days. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.